Assalamu alaikum, Asma. Wa alaikum assalam, Yasmin. Are we ready to go? All, yes, all yours. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, friends, near and far. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, as you know, our program today is intended for youth, um, specifically for youth over eight. Um, young, uh, kids younger than eight are welcome to join, but because of the nature of this topic, um, it might be more suitable for children over the ages of eight, but the younger audience are welcome to join us and um, observe, inshallah. So I'm gonna just share my screen and get started. Okay, so like Yasmin said, topic today is looking within, taking a closer look at our biases, blind spots, and subtle habits. Subtle habits are things that are kind of like, that we do without realizing. And I'll explain each, each section, inshallah. So, as you guys know that the recent events um, starting with some tragic things that happened in our communities um, involving the Black Lives Matter event and how things just stirred up so quickly. Um, many massages around the country, um, many different organizations have been talking about Black Lives Matter and everything that is related to it. And with everything that they have shared, I wanted to share a more deeper perspective that we must look within ourselves. As you are learning about um, the things that you are seeing in the news, the conversations you're listening to in your living rooms, the conversations you see on social media, the memes, the hashtags, all of those things. This, these aren't fashion statements. These are actually real things that are happening to people. And as those things are happening, I'd like for each of us, each and every person listening, not just my younger friends in the audience, I'm talking to the parents, the elders, and everyone here that's joining us, that each of us has a duty to look within. Because when we read the Quran, Allah is talking to us, to each person individually. He's not talking to someone who belongs to this group or that group. He's specifically talking to us. So as we talk today, as you listen to me talk, Think about every point that I make. How does this relate to you? Whether you are in third grade, fifth grade, seventh grade, high school, college, beyond, adult, retired, wherever you are in your life, how does this relate to you? And as I'm saying it to you, I question myself first. And believe it or not, there are many things I am also guilty of. So inshallah, let's start and um, look within ourselves. Let's dive a little bit deeper and today get comfortable in learning about yourself. So I will ask you questions. I will share some things with you and I'll also pause for reflection. That means there'll be some quiet time and you will just sit quietly and I will do the same because it's very important to reflect. And in order to reflect, we need some quiet, empty space. Inshallah, we will do that. Yasmin, is there anything um, that I need to add before we get started? Anything? Anything? No, not at all. You're welcome to continue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the agenda is looking within ourselves from a psychoanalyst's view. So I broke it down from um, in looking at ourselves from different lenses, different perspectives. Looking within ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's view some examples of what biases are, blind spots, and subtle habits. And the last part is my favorite part, is we're gonna reflect, literally. And I'll explain that, inshallah. Okay. So, the masks we wear. So there is a famous psychoanalyst and psychiatrist named Carl Jung. He was a famous Swiss uh, psychoanalyst 
that help people to understand their personalities. So he studied the different ways our, uh, our thinking is made of. What are we made of? And without going into deep, uh, a deep thesis about what he said about personalities, I'm just gonna take two portions, two main portions that relate to our discussion about looking within. He said that each human wears different masks and he called them the persona. And the other side was, he said each person also has a shadow. That is a side that's behind our mask. That is a side that's only reserved for very specific people. And for some people, it's reserved for no one. It's only for them. So our public side, that is the side that we don't show, uh, excuse me, that is the side that we show to people, right? That is the side of us that comes out when we are around people. It helps us to adapt to situations and it's convenient. So for example, when you are at school, it's a different you. So the you that your teachers see is very different from the you that your parents see. It's different from the you that your friends see. And it's different from the you that everybody else in your family, in your community sees. Why is that? I'm not gonna answer that question. That's something for you. Think about it. Why do we behave differently when we are around certain people? So that is why we adapt, right? We adapt whether we're around family, whether we're around friends, our school uh, communities, so just think about that. Our private side, like I said, that is the side that we save only for ourselves and people close to us. Most commonly our parents and maybe sometimes our siblings. Um, but that doesn't mean that everybody knows everything about you in your household. There's still a side of you that only you know. And according to Carl Jung, the traits or the things that we don't like in other people, maybe that portion of us, of that person is inside of us. Meaning that if you don't like a certain habit that somebody has, maybe you have that capacity. So these are traits that we don't like about ourselves. We don't talk about it as often as we wish we could because Maybe we're embarrassed, this is something private, it's secret, um, and it's only reserved for us. And that doesn't mean we should talk to everybody about it. This is just that side of ours that we save behind the masks that we wear. Um, so do you have a habit that you don't like in other people? Think about it. Some people don't like loud chewing sounds. That's me, for example. And I often pause to reflect on uh, Carl Jung's um, saying that, yeah, maybe that is a quality that I probably possess and I don't like it in myself. Maybe that's why I don't like it in other people. Is there something similar that you can relate to? Think about it, write it down if you have to, um, because these are all, everything that I'm sharing with you today is for reflecting. Fortunately, we need both. We need our public side and our private side to balance ourselves. So that is that side of our personality, according to Carl Jung. Your persona, what you show to people, and your shadow, the side that you keep for yourself, mainly for yourself. So the next part is looking within yourself from Allah's view. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see? What does he know? What do you think? You think he knows your persona or your shadow? Does he only know the side that you show to everybody else? Or does he also know about your shadow? Allah, he knows about everything. He knows about the persona. He knows about the shadow. And he knows about everything that's in between. And he knows things that you and I don't even know about ourselves. Because subhanAllah, he created us. Right? And he constantly reminds us in the Quran that he knows what is hidden and what is exposed, not just in ourselves, but also in the heavens and the earth, right? And he's not just saying that um, because he's Allah, he's saying that because he really does know it, subhanAllah. And sometimes we do have some deep problems, but we cover them up with something else so no one knows. 
For example, pretending to be nice to someone in front of other people, but when you are alone, you wish bad things for them or you make fun of them. Can you think of some examples about yourself or a time when you um, pretended to be nice to somebody because your parents wanted them to be nice or because that person was a guest speaker in your classroom or because you were around company that wouldn't accept your behavior otherwise? However, when you were in a different setting, around different people or by yourself, you were really dreading that experience or you talk bad about them behind their back. Or how about this one? Agreeing with people about a social I issue because it's easy for you at that moment. But when you are with a different group of people who may have a different opinion, you make fun of that exact group that you previously said you supported. Right? That's hypocrisy. Be very careful about who you make fun of. And this is for me as well. Who you make fun of in front of other people behind their backs? Or who do you agree with? And if you simply don't agree with someone, you know, if you have the choice, you can stay quiet. Unless somebody asks you for your opinion, you can say, I, I'm, I'm choosing not to share my opinion at the moment. I, I, I wish not to share it. That's it, right? You don't, you're not obligated to always share your opinion because if you're afraid that you might fall into this pattern of agreeing on something because it's convenient or because you feel like you have to, you don't always have to. You don't always have to share things you see on social media. You can ignore them. And if they bother you, you can remove them. You can unfollow them, right? Be very careful about agreeing with things or following things um, that don't feel right in your heart. Because Allah knows what's hidden and what's not hidden. So my question for you is, where exactly do you stand? And I'm not talking about the current Black Lives Movement. I'm just talking about general things. Maybe something popped up in your mind as I was talking to you. Maybe a certain experience popped up in your head. And not something that happened to you, something that you think you may have done to somebody else. It's very easy to pull out experiences that we experience that somebody else did to us. That's a great starting point, but think a little bit deeper. Think about it. Maybe you were on the other side at some point, whether it was about a TV show, about a ch choice of clothing, choice of brand, shoes, food, anything, right? Were you ever on that side? Maybe you were, or maybe you didn't realize it. And moving forward, now that you know better, you might be able to think a little more clearly or ask yourself those questions. Because Allah knows all of these things and much more about you and me. So let's move on to some examples of biases, blind spots, and subtle habits. And I know I won't be able to cover too many examples. Um, I didn't go very specific on a group, on a certain group of people or a certain culture. I'm keeping it very, very general so that you can make that connection. This is not about one group or another. This is about you. Again, keep that in mind. So when you see my examples, right, you should be able to plug in your own example very easily because it's a plain slate. Bias. What is bias? It's when you unfairly show favor to one thing over the other. So for example, when you go to the park, who do you look for to play with? Take a look at this picture. Say you walk into this park, right? And maybe there's a lot of things you already pulled out from this picture that you're seeing on the screen, right? Maybe you're wondering, um, where are kids that look like me in this picture? Probably, go ahead, ask those questions. This, the purpose of this exercise is to ask those questions, right? But let me put this question out there for you. When you go to the park, who do you look for to play with? Do you always choose the same types of people to play with? What? So let's put you in a school setting, right? When it's time to be outdoors or when it's social time. Who do you find? to play with? Is it the same people or to hang out with or to sit with, 
right? Depending on what your age group is. Um, for, my, for the parents in, uh, in here, um, when you are in a social gathering, who do you go to right away? I know it's natural for us to go to people that we are comfortable with, but eventually, right, when you are a little more settled into that space, where do you go? Or do you stick to the same group? Or are you a floater? Are you somebody that plays with everybody? Are you somebody that has specific friends or specific groups? Where do you fit in? Here's another example. So this is a picture of different types of housing, right? How about when someone tells you that they live in a certain type of home? Right? So here are some examples. We have a building. We have another set of buildings or condos, if you will, townhomes, and a single family house, right? Does your opinion change? Does it change? Be honest. I'm talking to the adults as well because our kids really feed off of our opinions. Does your opinion change inside or does your reaction change when you find out that somebody lives in a different type of housing? Be honest, you don't have to answer this right now because this is really for your shadow, the shadow part of you to think about. So when somebody tells you I'm renting or I'm living uh, with somebody, or I'm living in someone's basement, or I have a single family house, or I live in a townhouse, I live in an apartment building. What opinions do you right away form about them? What biases do you have about them? Think about it. This is, this is one that I personally came across several times growing up, and so I can really, really relate, relate to this. I had um, this one time, um, a young person, uh, when they, they, they had a very strong opinion about a certain type of housing. And when I asked them, it was very simple. When I, when I asked them more and more questions about it, um, it was because this is all they saw. They were only exposed to one type of housing. They just didn't know that people do live in different types of housing. So be mindful of when somebody tells you that they live in a building or in a single family house. What opinions are you forming about people right away? And have this honest discussion with your shadow, not with your persona, because your persona is gonna go with what everybody else is saying or what seems to sound right, what seems to fit. So I hope this picture helps, inshallah. Moving on, blind spot. These are patterns of things that we do and do not pay attention to always. So when you're driving, right? You probably hear your parents say, um, this driver was in my blind spot, right? It's a spot the driver cannot see, but the driver is aware of it, but they, they can't really pay too much attention to it because they don't have enough mirrors to show them, right? So we have that in, the, in our behaviors as well. So here's a picture, take a, take a look at this picture and I'm gonna stay quiet and uh, perhaps I'll mute myself for 30 seconds because I'm going to let you take a look at this picture. What do you see? So a few pictures on here. Right? This one. Maybe it sounds funny right now, but I don't find it funny at the moment, but maybe for some people it is funny. Let's make fun of people. And you see these two people just having a great time because they're in each other's company. Um, bunch of young people here in this picture just laughing. You see this young man pointing fingers perhaps at someone or at something, right? Um, and a bunch of people here, down here, laughing right? There's nothing wrong with joking. However, when you do it at the cost of someone or at the cost of something that's special to someone that's meaningful, that's, that's not really funny. In reality, it's, it's actually, uh, you're embarrassing that person and you're embarrassing yourself more. 
So maybe this was done to you at some point. Maybe somebody laughed at you or made, made fun of you. Um, but again, we're talking about what you have done or might, what, might, what you might have been a part of, right? Maybe because you didn't realize it or because everybody else was doing it. It was convenient. But um, be aware of that. Maybe you didn't do it at all. Or maybe you saw someone doing it, right? Making fun of people's accents, um, food, food choices, clothing, cultural practices. A very typical one, uh, I'm just gonna call it out. I see a lot of people imitating accents from India. That's very typical. And people from that subcontinent do it, but most important, mainly, people outside of that as well, they do it. Is it because that accent is enjoyable? It's fun to copy, like what is your intention behind it, right? Be mindful of that. Could you be really offending someone by copying their accent, right? Because honestly, everybody has an accent. Everyone has an accent. There is such a thing as an American accent. There is such a thing as an English accent and all those others, right? Some of us are gifted that we can um, copy those ac accents very, very, um, re very beautifully. Many people are talented in that. But what is your intention behind that? If you're doing it to make fun of someone, then just drop it. Just be honest with yourself, be good to yourself, and say, you know what? It's not worth it. I know I have it in me, but I'm not, I'm gonna choose not to do it today. Not today. One step at a time. Be mindful of that. And of course, our Prophet warned us about making inappropriate, inappropriate jokes that hurt people's feelings because it's very easy to be on the other side. And um, some psychologists do say that um, a person that makes fun of other people, if you ask them to name one good quality about themselves, it's very hard for them because they lack that self-confidence about themselves. Are you someone that lacks confidence? I hope not. question for you is what are some jokes or funny things that you hear in your home regarding different cultural groups and we're gonna pause because if you're sitting with your parents this is a great time to ask or um, respectfully respectfully remember we're maintaining respect with each other um, what are some things that you hear in your household some things maybe we find funny right as a group at home, but when you're outside, it's really not that funny. How about the way ethnic groups or types of people are referred to in your home? Notice I'm saying in your home because this is about you. This is about your environment. And for parents, this is the environment that you are creating for your kids. And maybe parents have some reflecting to do as well, right? Maybe this was your household. Maybe you can now go back and reflect on your own household growing up and it probably felt normal, right? But now that you are learning more and hearing about different perspectives, things look different, don't they? It's like wearing your favorite outfit inside the house, but when you step out, it feels different. Very similar. So I'm gonna repeat the question again. What about the way ethnic groups or types of people are referred to in your home? What are some words? What are some common words that are used to describe certain types of people? Moving on to subtle habits. Subtle habits, these are habits that we practice but don't give too much thought to, but are sometimes noticed by other people. So maybe you've noticed some things in other people right? Um, and it's very easy for you to point it out. Um, or maybe someone pointed this out in you, right? But let's focus on how these habits affect other people. So I've got some pictures here, right? Let's do this one. Picture in the middle. Avoiding certain groups on purpose. Avoiding certain groups of people or certain types of people or certain genders or certain age groups on purpose. 
I don't know what that intention is, what the intention is behind it, but maybe, maybe it's a habit that you've picked up on because it was a common practice. It's a common practice in your household. It's just not some, something you've never tried being around certain people, but it's become a part of your subtle habit that you do av avoid certain groups, right? Um, right here. Um, avoiding, again, avoiding certain things that people say or do, certain practices that people do. This one's my favorite because I think many of us can relate to it. Um, you're at the red light, right? And you're in a space, um, the street where you are at the red light, um, it's a busy street. There's people walking around. Um, and your car's door is locked. But when you see a certain group of people or certain type of person walk by, you right away lock your window, lock your door, and you roll up your window. Pause right there. Pause exactly where this person's finger is. What's going on here? Ask yourself that question. Why did I do it? Is it because I have a certain certain view of this person or this type of person or this group of people? Am I scared? Am I intimidated? What's going to happen? I'm not saying you, you don't look out for your safety. Of course, safety comes first. But safety wasn't a concern until this type of person passed by you, right? Think about it. Maybe um, the next time you're sitting in a car at the red light, you notice that you your fingers automatically lock, window, lock, lock the door or roll up the windows. And for some people that have had experiences, unfortunate experiences, that's also, that could also be a reason, but I'm trying to give it a more um, perspective of culture and being around certain groups of people because we are looking within. How about um, not going to certain neighborhoods on purpose? So for parents, my question is um, parents of younger children, avoiding certain parks in your neighborhood right or maybe you prefer one park over the other why is that it can't be because that playground is better alone right could it be because there are certain groups of people that you connect with better or because there are certain groups of people that are not there think about it because these are the subtle biases the habits that are children or those under our custody, our care, they pick up on it. And then no wonder why they go up to avoid those same things or practice those same habits, right? Or not going to certain grocery stores in your neighborhood. What's your reason? I'm, I'm just curious. You don't have to answer it for me. This is just for you, for, for your own reflection. And as I'm saying it, I'm also thinking about my own biases here. So these were just some examples, right? So now this is the part where I'm gonna ask everyone to do a short activity. We're gonna reflect literally. That means I'm gonna ask um, everyone to grab a mirror or grab your cell phones and put them in camera mode, please, if you will. Turn on your camera and I'd like for you to literally reflect, grab a device where you can see your reflection, where you can see your face. Get comfortable with it because it's the only one you have. <laughs> okay, so grab a phone, a device. I'll give you all a couple of seconds to go grab something, grab a mirror, right? Anything that you can see your reflection in. Please go ahead, I'll give you a few seconds to do it. And I'll go on mute in the meantime.
Okay, so hopefully you have something, you found something that you can use to reflect. Um, I'm just gonna check to see if we have any questions coming in. Yasmin, are there any questions that we need to answer right away before we move on? So I was asked uh, to ask you what you meant when you said um, looks within by Allah's view. I asked the person to clarify, but I haven't gotten a response from them. Yep. If anyone does have questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat or uh, type them in the anonymous Q&A box. So I'll try to explain, explain it based on what I understand. Um, looking within yourselves from the way Allah sees you. Take a look at yourself from Allah's perspective. You know how we say bird's eye view, right? We say side view, things like that. So take a look at yourself in the way Allah sees you. You know how we say put yourself in someone else's shoes, right? Now put yourself in, of course, we can't put ourselves in Allah's way, astaghfirullah. But how do you think Allah sees you based on the type of person you are, the actions you do in public, and the actions you do privately? What do you think is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's opinion of you? I hope this is, uh, I hope this is helpful, inshallah. And, um, you know, if, um, if a follow-up question comes in. I, I hope I gave that. enough examples for adults as well in here, inshallah. Okay. So I hope this, um, to the anonymous attendee that asked this question, I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to understand that we are, my question was to see yourself from the perspective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no way we can put ourselves in his position. He is the creator, he created us. There's no way it can be reversed. But because Allah is the one who's going to judge us, it's important for us to see how, uh, what his opinion might be of us, right? Because we, um, the purpose of our life is to make Allah happy. And Allah told us how we can make him happy in his book and through the life of the Prophet wasallam. Any other questions that I missed, Yasmin? That was the only question I had gotten so far. Okay, guys, go ahead, continue asking questions. Um, we are taking them um, as I speak, and I will pause again, inshallah, for questions. But let's continue with our activity. I'm gonna ask you some questions, simple questions, hopefully, but these are simple questions that require some thinking. So you don't have to answer it right now because the answers are gonna come to you slowly, right? It's gonna come in pieces. Maybe part of the answer will come up today, Maybe you'll sleep on it. Maybe you'll read something uh, a few days later. It might remind you of what I said today, right? So the questions are simple. Um, don't take it too seriously, but these are just questions for you and I to reflect, okay? So I hope you have your mirror or a device where you can see your own reflection. I know many people tell me they don't like looking at their own pictures or they don't like looking at themselves too closely. Don't be afraid. You are beautiful, you are amazing. Allah created you. This, you are, so you are his best work, okay? So be grateful to your creator for creating this beautiful you, alhamdulillah, right? So right away, when you see your reflection, say alhamdulillah, smile at yourself and be grateful for all the good things you can see in your, uh, on your face, just the surface part of it, because that's important, okay? And a smile is something that, covers so many different things, right? So let's start. First question. Now you're doing this as you're looking at your reflection. So I hope you can hear my voice. Don't pay attention to the screen right now. Follow my voice, okay? What do I dislike in others? What do I dislike in others? That means what do I not like in others? So you're asking yourself this question as you're looking at your reflection on your device or on the mirror. Could it mean that I also have this quality or I once had it? Is that why I dislike it so much in someone else? What is it that you dislike in, in other people? You're asking yourself this question. Feel free to take a look at the screen and ask yourself this question in your own ways now.
I'm pausing because I want to give everyone a few seconds. Okay, next question. What joke have I made in the past that may have made someone upset? And for those of you who are fully aware of a joke that you've made, say that joke out loud. Say it out loud to yourself in your reflection and see how it sounds now. How does that joke sound? How different is it now than it was when you, when you made that joke, when you were in a comfortable space with other people where you felt like it was okay to make that joke? It's okay. No one's judging you. At least I'm not judging you. I can't even hear you. But even if I was next to you, right? The whole point of this exercise is to reflect on yourself. Don't be judgmental. Don't judge yourself like that. Because if you don't point out the things that are not liked by Allah in yourself, it'll be very, very hard. It'll be very, very hard for you to make deep reflections. Okay. Next question. Is there a group of people that I stay away from for no valid reason? Maybe you've been told, uh, if you're a young person, uh, if you're a child, maybe you've been told to stay away from certain types of people, right? Just answer it. Is there somebody or a group of people that you have been told to stay away from? Besides reasons of safety, or maybe somebody hurt you or did something harmful to you, but I'm talking about something that doesn't have a reason. And for my adult friends that are watching, is there a specific group of people that you stay away from because of a cultural bias, right? Maybe, uh, maybe the culture that you belong to has a certain opinion of a certain group of people or a certain type of people, right? Think about that. I know, I know I've had a lot of reflections about, about these things and I continue to do it and I continue to catch myself and say, wow, I can't believe I just did that because I didn't realize it. You have to take the time to reflect. So do you have an answer? Is there a specific group of people that you stay away from for no valid reason? Are there any neighborhoods that you stay away from? Are there certain foods besides for um, reasons of, you know, allergies and things like that? Are there certain foods you just don't want to try because they are associated with a certain group of people? Yeah, what could that be? What could that be? Finally, you can put the mirrors away now. You guys can close the, the uh, reflection devices that you were using. Um, for some of you, this might be, whew, you can take a deep breath now. Relax, alhamdulillah. Now, I know you're probably, many of you are probably thinking, okay, I've heard all of this self-reflection about persona, the shadow, what Allah SWT thinks of me. Um, what can I do about all of this? There's a lot that you can do about all of this. And I would love to hear in the comment section, um, I'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts. Um, maybe there's already something that you're doing about it, but I'm gonna share a few simple next steps. They're very simple. Speak with people that are different from you. Obviously, you want to practice safety because we are under unusual circumstances. But when you do have an opportunity, speak with people that are different from you for the sake of learning. And you can just tell them that I've not been around people of XYZ places. I would love to learn about your culture. And if you are a person of color, you've probably been approached many times. I know I have. Um, people are apparently scared to ask me questions uh, about my hijab and I am very inviting to them and I say, please ask me. It's better to assume, make assumptions about me than um, it's just ask me, right? So if you ask them respectfully, nine times out of 10, they will respond, uh, happily respond to you. 
Okay, so speak with people that are different from you. Maybe there's someone in your neighborhood that you never had a chance to connect with and you've always been curious, but because you're so different from them, you feel like you have nothing in common with them. Um, think of ways to strike up a conversation. This goes for adults. There's so many adults I know personally that don't talk to their neighbors because of whatever personal reasons they have. It could just be mean that you're shy, but how would people know you if you don't make that effort, right? I'm not saying invite them for a play date at your house or invite them for tea, right? I'm just saying, go say hello to your neighbors. Very simple. And I'm going to give the credit for this idea to Imam Majid. He's said it many, many times to make efforts to get to know your neighbors. So thank you, Imam Majid, for that. Shout out to you. Um, so I will, I'm sharing this with everybody else now. Speak with people that are different from you. And if you have to rehearse dialogues in your head, do it. If you have to write it down, do it. But make that effort. They'll be very happy that you reached out to them. Next point, read literature from different parts of the world. So if you, you're used to reading books about certain characters or specific genre that you've been doing, maybe find that similar genre, but read it from a different perspective, an author that belongs to a different background. And, and literature, subhanAllah, books are, um, are our windows to the world, right? They help us see the world in different ways. And they say a reader lives a thousand lives. Do you have a thousand lives? And if you do, right, make those a thousand lives that are diverse. So read diverse material. Read material from different perspectives. And if you're younger, um, Talk to your parents about it so they can help you. And if you are a parent, choose literature for your kids that helps them to see different cultures, that exposes them to different points of view, not just one point of view. Because how would you know if you don't even know what the other side or people from the other parts of the world are thinking, right? You don't want to be in your shell. You want to be somebody that can think for yourself. And you won't be able to think for yourself if you don't know other sides, if you're not exposed to it. And this one's my favorite, the third one. Understand why people have different accents. Why do British people have British accents? Why do Indian people have Indian accents? Right, it's different. Why do people from Asian countries have those accents? And subhanAllah, they're all, most of them are bilingual. That means they know more than one language. So if you are someone that only speaks English and finds it funny and convenient to make fun of other accents, guess what? Those people ha are way ahead of you because they know another language that you don't. So it's very easy to make fun of people. It's much harder to go learn about them. And I'm challenging each and every person listening and watching today to understand why people have different accents. And maybe you want to, maybe you want to copy that accent. Maybe you're tempted. Maybe you're really good at it. Sure. But don't do it to make fun of them. Right? So first, seek to understand. Right? So un learn why people look the way they do. Why do they have certain di different accents? SubhanAllah. The next point, learn about new cultures. Um, and depending on where you live, right? Each society has its own culture and its own subculture. Each household that has different practices. My sister's household is different from mine. And maybe whoever's watching, right? Family members in, in your family, different families, have their own family cultures, right? Understand why they do that. Start with your own families. Understand why they practice certain things. Why do they do certain things. Um, many people take pride in their cooking, right? Learn why. Why do they cook a certain way? What's it about? And you'll be surprised to learn that they have some very good reasons. So learn about different cultures. Um, for those of you that love to travel and are not able to, alhamdulillah, at least we still have this medium where we can connect virtually. So virtually, uh, watch, watch the videos or um, read Right? Learn about different cultures through the channels that you do have available to you. And lastly, 
Ask questions. Please ask questions. Don't make assumptions about people. It's very easy to make up something in your mind about someone. It's much harder to walk up to them and ask them, why are you a certain way, right? Or why do you do things this way? Of course, you want to be very, very respectful, right? Um, people that have disabilities, they love answering questions. Don't be afraid to ask them questions. But remember, you have to be sensitive because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings along the way. Ask them kindly. And if you need practice, practice. But, um, but do, do make that effort to reach out to people that are different from you. And this wraps up our discussion about looking within. I hope this discussion was an opportunity for you to learn more about yourself and to make that effort to learn more about others so that you can make yourself a better person, a person that knows more than they did before. So thank you for reflecting together. We hope that this discussion did help you to dig a little bit deeper to look within yourselves and keep this practice. This is a good practice. It's called the mirroring technique. Use it. Um, it comes in very handy, especially when you are um, having some down moments. Um, talk to yourself and be kind. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Like I said, there's only one you. Nobody can replace you. Okay, so do that. Um, so I can take some questions right now. Um, Sister Yasmin, do we have any questions floating? We did, we did not have any other questions submitted, but um, everyone is welcome to type them in the chat box or write them anonymously in the Q&A section. Um, you also have Sister Uzma's um, email address. Sister Uzma is, mashallah, a counselor and a personal coach, and she has her own company, Bright Roots Coaching, um, where she's available to speak with whoever might want to reach out to her. Um, she has tons of experience working with youth in counseling and in coaching. And Uzma, can you, um, you're national, nationally certified counselor, right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Mashallah. Okay. 